using this thing, right? Even though, look, nothing on it. Uh, total freestyle video here. Quick cut here. So these walls are not pistachio green like this. It is actually from the green lights there that I have. Um, and it's just making everything look green. So no, I don't live in a pistachio colored house. By the way, before I get started on all this, uh, I'm gonna give you a warning of rambling, um, drawn out stories, and loss of train of thought. Uh, because I didn't write any of this down, I just wanted to speak to you guys from the heart, so be warned on all of that. Um, it should be fun to try and edit. So, it's been some time since I've done a video, and uh, this one I really want to do, it's really important to me, and it's a very important topic that a lot of people really need to kind of start talking about. Um, of course, that means mental health um, for all people out there, especially at a time like now where this is just really a tough time to be in the world and it's a tough time to be out there uh, with COVID and, and everything like that. Mental health is something that not just affects the person dealing with it, but all the people around them. Uh, it can affect their relationships, their jobs, their friendships, um, their everyday routine and everything that they're doing. And it's something where people have a hard time asking for help and a lot of people don't even realize that they need the help they need uh, as it's happening. So. Uh, I do want to talk about that, but I'd like to talk about it through my personal experiences. Uh, therefore, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm not talking about anybody and stuff that they've gone through. Uh, and it's something I've dealt with for a long time. It's something that I've actually tried to get help in before. Um, and it's something that I'm really pushing to get help in now. Uh, and it's it's been tough and it, it's been a hard journey. I hope with a video like this that actually people will share this video and I hope people will use this video as to hopefully gain some strength and to reach out and to get the help that they need. Uh, again, not just for the people around them, but for themselves uh, to help live a better and happier life through just a strong mental health. So if you're catching this video by chance, you don't know me. Um, if you're watching it because I shared it, you do know me. And you know, with the amount of people that I'm connected with, you may know me from a very different period of my life from person to person. Some people on here uh, may have known me since I was a, a little kid. Um, uh, people that I still keep in touch with, um, a good friend of mine, Matt Grabsky, which is a great business owner up in Utica, New York. Uh, he and I were in a Pac-Man figure skating show when we were two and three years old. Um, along with his sisters and somewhere around here I have a picture of it if I can find a picture I'll, I'll post it up here real quick um, then there's other friends that I met through my younger years of playing hockey and baseball uh, kids that you know that grew up they've lived very successful lives like uh, friends like Chris Hamline that I've known since probably fourth grade and um, a lot of other people like that and then people that I've known from high school that I'm still very very close friends with uh, and uh, then friends that I've even known from college and beyond and people have known me in a lot of different points in my life and didn't know what was going on in my life or didn't know what I was going through at the time and it's because I honestly probably hit it very well or people probably just thought that's how I was and people didn't realize the effects of what was happening and uh, the effects it had on my life so um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is actually um, kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I just started and signed up for a treatment through a website called betterhelp.com. I heard it through the SmartList podcast, which both of these things you need to check out, but SmartList is hysterical with Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett. Um, all three are phenomenal comedic actors, um, but also well-rounded actors. And uh, it sponsors their show and it's something where I was like, oh, okay, well, this sounds like something I should check out. And I did, and I signed up for it. And I actually begin my counseling very soon, and I'm, I'm very excited. Um, three years ago, I never would have admitted to seeking help and seeking counseling uh, because we grew up in a society where people just need to suck it up and get over, get over whatever you're dealing with. And um, it's hard. I was told that by my own mom growing up, and you know, it's, you, you're always taught to be tough 
and having feelings shows weakness and, and all these other kind of things. So it makes it very hard in somebody's life to seek help. Um, but uh, a point I'm at in my life right now, you know, I'm living in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, it is 2020. So if you're watching this video in the future, this is where we are now. It's mid-December 2020. Christmas is a couple weeks away. There are millions of people out of work because of COVID-19. Uh, the vaccine, I think, hit the, hit the streets today. But uh, it's going out to obviously first responders, nurses, doctors, and things like that. The people who need it first um, to protect themselves so they can help other people. And um, it doesn't mean there's an end in sight. It doesn't mean that we're anywhere closer to the finish line because we don't know what's going to happen with this vaccine. Um, you know, but again, if it's still going on, please wear your mask, just be safe. Um, but it's a hard time in everybody's lives right now. Like in 2008, we hit a recession um, and a lot of people lost work. This is nothing to do with the, with the finances or the government or anything. This is a global pandemic and people are lost jobs. They've lost their homes. They've lost their complete means of life. It's, it's affecting their relationships. Um, they're out on the streets and there's nothing a lot of people can do about it. And people are actually holding their money a lot tighter because they don't know when they're going to be the next affected person of this. Um, and I was no one that was spared from this. Um, I work in the gym business. I ran a gym here in Raleigh and the gym shut down for six months. We were closed longer than any state in the country. There are other states that have reclosed their gyms now. Uh, North Carolina, they put stricter laws on it because um, it's only a matter of time before it may happen again, honestly, because people just don't want to follow the protocol and they don't want to take preventative measures for whatever reason and it's affecting everybody. Um, and then I got back in with another gym once we reopened and you know the damage that gym company took from COVID the first time around, they were not able to recover and I was let go again. Uh, luckily I am a professional photographer and videographer outside here so I am able to make a little extra money. Uh, I have some new job prospects and honestly I'm going to be moving out of Raleigh very soon. Uh, going to a new area which I am very excited about. Um, getting me a little bit of momentum in my life which I, I'm pretty happy to do. Um, anybody who knows me knows I've had no problem moving all over the country as I've lived in New York, Florida, Texas, New Mexico, Wisconsin, back to New York, Connecticut, now North Carolina, and um, my next location is a surprise. Uh, I'll announce that at some point um, when the time is right, but it is going to be a, a lot better of a metropolis, a lot better photography and videography opportunities as well, um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but back to uh, the COVIDs and shutdowns. As me, like many other people, this took a huge hit on mental health. We started to question our value. We started to question uh, if we even have the right to be around the people that we are around. And um, someone like me who's actually dealt with depression and anxiety my entire life, um, it really gets into your head and it starts affecting a lot of things around you. Um, it affected uh, relationships I've had, friendships I've had, and it puts you on an island because if you don't go and get help, you'll be on the island forever. And it's very lonely and it's very hard to be here. Um, but like I said, I've signed up for betterhelp.com. And uh, like I said, I start tomorrow and I'm, I'm really excited and I will keep everybody updated on how that's going. Uh, I'm not going to be shy. I'm not going to be closed off about what I'm doing because I'm doing this for me. And if you follow me, you're friends with me, um, hopefully you support me in my growth uh, of what I'm going to be doing to help better my life and you know hopefully that'll trickle down to everybody else as well. Um, but to kind of give you more of an insight into my life, you know, I, like I said, I deal with depression and anxiety. I definitely think my anxiety fuels the depression more and my anxiety is one of my biggest issues. Um, but I do, I did grow up with a lot of self-worth uh, issues. You know, I grew up um, not knowing I even had a dad until I was eight years old. Met my dad when I was eight. He lived in Los Angeles and Seattle, um, and he died when I was 16. And uh, my dad died of an uncurable illness. And uh, you know, he was taken care of by my stepmom, Trisha, which I'm still very close to, and which is honestly the best human on the planet. Um, I still talk to her all the time. She's still uh, very supportive um, and talks to me all the time. And, and it always is looking out for my best interests. And, it's one of the few solid points of support I have in my life and I appreciate her more than I could ever say. But, um, you know, I, I met my dad and he was a totally different person than my mom. I'll get into my mom in a little bit here. I was a totally different person. My dad was young when I was born and 
he bailed. Um, he wasn't there, he was uh, still basically a kid and he wasn't ready to be a dad. Um, and my mom would not let him go without at least knowing how I was doing everything. She didn't ask for money, she didn't ask for anything that I know of. Um, but finally when I was eight years old, I had the opportunity to go and meet my dad. I got on a plane by myself, uh, flew out to Los Angeles and I got off the plane and I immediately knew who my dad was. I, I, this was back when they used to be able to come to the gate to actually greet you. Um, and if you were an underage flyer, Meyer, um, you got treated like a king. The flight attendants escorted you around, you got drove around in a little carts that honked at everybody in the airport, you got little wings. Um, it was the best. But um, I, wish, I wish I could do that now. Can I do that now? Uh, airline people, hook me up with that. Like, let's get me some VIP treatment here, huh? But, um, you know, I got to meet my dad and he was a totally different person. He didn't know how to punish me, so it was uh, much like a prison sentence where no radio, no TV, all you got were books and paper. And I drew uh, and made paper airplanes until my fingers bled, basically. No, it wasn't that bad, but, um, you know, at the same time, you know, my dad taught me a lot of things. He, you know, we out water skiing and camping and um, took me out on the boat and helped me establish a love for boating. Um, which I don't have a boat now, but you know, I'll get it. But, um, and you know, when he moved to Seattle, uh, he moved to Seattle to marry what is now my stepmom, Trish. Uh, best thing he ever did. I was a total pain in the butt at his wedding. I left and started walking around downtown Seattle in the middle of the night when I was 12 years old. Um, but I felt like I was gonna be abandoned. And uh, I felt like, cause they were getting married the day after my birthday, I was never gonna be able to see my dad on my birthday again. And I felt like I was getting robbed of something. And it was a guy I just met, but again, I'm 12 and nobody's thinking clearly. Um, but uh, you know, when, when my dad died, I got to see him a couple days before he died and he was very sick. And it was the first time he had been alert and at least talking, uh, still hallucinogenic from uh, the drugs and stuff that he was on. But um, you know, it was uh, a funny thing and everybody got to get a good laugh. And you know, a couple days after I left there, he passed and I probably knew right the moment he did and um, lost it. <laughs> so, um, and that was, you know, how it was with my dad. My dad was empowering, he was encouraging, and, um, you know, n a nonviolent person, ran his own business, and um, a very successful business, and, you know, was the best. The guy was my hero, so. Only knowing him for eight years at that time, just really took a huge hit on me. Um, then, but the rest of my life, I, I was raised with my mom. My mom was a very heavy smoker. My mom did not like to do any kind of exercise. In fact, she didn't like to do anything that wandered outside of her being able to smoke cigarettes, um, which is probably why I've never done it, why I've always hated it. Um, but um, my mom used a very different approach. Now, I'm going to preface everything by saying that my mom always made sure I had a roof over my head. My mom made sure there was always food on the table and I'll tell you right now, there is no better cook than my mom was. My big regret is not being able to get any of her recipes. Um, however, if I did, I'd probably be about four to 500 pounds right now, and I would be playing the role of Santa Claus in a mall somewhere. But I'd be a happy guy with all that food. But, um, you know, my mom always kept me in sports. My mom kept me in hockey, kept me skiing, baseball. I was a catcher in baseball. So all these sports that cost a ton of money, my mom didn't make a lot of money. But my mom also had a huge mean streak to her. Um, you know, my mom was the person who tried to use negative reinforcement um, to encourage me and it just made me shut down and bottle up and it turned me into an angry person. Um, if I was ever in trouble, my mom didn't really believe in grounding me. Uh, I turned into a pretty good ass beating. <laughs> and uh, you know, growing up, I just thought that the way it was. Um, in high school, everybody, knew me, knew it was me and one of my other friends, which of course I'm not gonna name him, but they were, they always said their biggest fears were my mom and his dad. And they were the tough ones, so it also makes me worry about what my friend went through, looking at it in retrospect. But yeah, I got the crap kicked out of me quite a bit, stabbed in the arm with a fork, and um, you know, my mom, I was sitting in the back seat, my mom was driving, she was a smoker, and when she flung a cigarette out the window, it would come right in the back window and hit me in the face and burn me. Um, and of course, as soon as I complained, it was shut up and get over it, suck it up, whatever. And um, even when I had broke my femur in high school, it was, uh, I wasn't taken to the hospital until the next day because my mom just kept telling me it was a Charlie horse. <laughs> and um, I did finish the inning somehow and even tried to take my bat, but uh, it, it definitely wasn't good. Um, that was back in the old clone and post Legion baseball days. But um, it was it was rough and it was, you know, when you're raised with that from the time you're, 
a newborn until, you know, I, I stayed at home until I was 18, went away to college, lived on my own ever since then. And, um, you know, my mom still tried to help with money and stuff like that when I was having hard times, which is the consolation. You know, my mom never let me go without money until she lost her job. Um, actually, probably around the same time of year as I just lost this one. But, um, you know, she was an angry lady and took it out on me all the time. And it was my mom. I loved her. So I let it happen and I didn't really know what else to do. I didn't really know how else to handle these kind of things. So, um, but, you know, it it resonated with me and I think all of my entire adult life like without me knowing it or not it left me very angry and it translated into me dealing with other people and it's not been fair to them I definitely um, knew some really great people whether it was a relationship or a friend that I've lost because of the way I would react to certain situations and you know I, I regret that and I am sorry to those people for having done that and you know it's I'm 42 now and it's taken me a long time to really see it. And it was because somebody else I'm currently very close to that helped bring it to light. And I couldn't be more grateful regardless of the way it was brought to me. Uh, I couldn't be more grateful that it was finally brought to my attention, which was the extra push I needed to really start seeking help. Um, but it, it's left me with a life of anxiety and it was a long story going into, into everything here because basically the anxiety it runs somebody's life. So there's a couple things I forgot to add into this, so I'm doing it after the recording of the whole thing. As you can see, colors are back to normal. But um, one thing I forgot to talk about with it being 2020, we talked about coronavirus, we talked about um, you know just how hard it's been for a lot of people, is the uh, simple fact of the matter is that on top of like a lot of things that went wrong this year, um, my anxiety actually built up through a series of events that actually happened throughout this year. Um, it came from obviously coronavirus happening and the gyms closing down. Um, it came from all sports being closed down, which is how I make a lot of my money uh, actually shooting sports. And I have been able to do that because they weren't allowing photographers in uh, when sports did start back up. But even before that, um, sports just shut down completely. So I had no sports or concerts to shoot. Um, and I was working on a couple different uh, small films, short films, uh, one on uh, FIBA 3 on 3 basketball, which uh, my buddy uh, Zoe is actually a huge part of. I, I do plan on finishing that. And then another one was actually about COVID and things shutting down and uh, other photographers and bands and things like that that haven't been able to perform. And um, the reason those things didn't get finished is because in mid-September, I came home from uh, the store or wherever I was at and I had my apartment broken into and all of my photo equipment was actually stolen. Um, and it was just the ultimate violation. It led to heightened anxiety. I wasn't able to sleep. I haven't felt safe in my own apartment um, in a long time. Uh, and you know, a week before that, my mailbox got broken into. Um, and it's just a series of events that just made it really hard to be comfortable here and just made it nearly impossible to have, have a good night's sleep, which led to exhaustion, which led to everything else even being worse as well. So it was a, a really t hard time um, gaining control of my thoughts and emotions. And, um, you know, all of that is while things were already financially tough. Um, so I had the police come, obviously, I had to fill out insurance, and my insurance company just brought me through the ringer and then barely gave me. Um, what it costs to replace everything. So while I was able to replace enough equipment to get myself back in business, um, I lost a lot of things that I used as tools before that I have to you know, just wait to buy again. Um, I did start a GoFundMe, which a couple people helped. I actually might relaunch that just to kind of um, try and get like the last pieces in place. But you know, I hate asking for help, which is what led me into a lot of this um, prolonged issues in the first place. And so, you know, a lot of that translated over and it just led into a domino effect of uh, my car being vandalized and, um, you know, I went to replace my tires and the guy at uh, NTB Auto tried to scam me. Um, I'll call them out all day. And um, it, it was just one thing after another that when you already have anxiety, just piles and piles and piles and piles up. And, um, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff just, you try and hide and pretend everything's okay. 
Um, but when you don't even feel safe sleeping in your own bed, it has an enormous effect on you. And so, you know, I, I didn't bring these things up. I actually kind of forgot. I got lost in train of thought from what I was recording before. But those were big things. And so, um, you know, I'm not looking for sympathy or pity or anything like that. I'm basically giving you an example of how things compile and they compile so quickly. Um, it's, it's like a dirty pile of clothes. You know, you think there's only a couple things in the hamper and next thing you know it towering over and falling over on you and it's it is tough so with that being said um the best i can do was just try and make the right steps in the right direction to try and fix everything um i had a lot of out outpour and support from people uh, especially with the gofundme um you know a lot of people just really reached out and, and tried to see how i was doing and then um you know, just a lot of pressure coming from a lot of different angles on a lot of stuff. So, um, those were other things that actually happened in the year that made things super tough and actually really hard for me to push forward as just every time you think you're taking a step forward, something happens and you get slammed 20 steps back. Um, and you know, I learned a lot about my own resilience. I learned a lot about my own strength, even if I didn't acknowledge that I had it. Um, clearly it was there because here I am and, and I did everything I needed to do to get myself back to where I, I needed to be and um, as hard as times get things will get better if you put yourself in motion for them to get better it's okay to be upset it's okay to be sad and it's okay to feel hurt it's not okay to accept defeat if that's any way to help push even further for you just remember it is not okay to accept defeat because once you do that all your momentum has gone and it is hard to get it back we're going into into everything here because basically the anxiety it runs somebody's life you know everything you're involved in you're consistently worried about it ending um, every time I've had a job even when I knew I was doing great I was always worried about when am I going to get fired, when am I going to get fired. I was worried about um, if it was a sale, I'm not going to get the sale no matter how well it was going. A person could be handing me their credit card, be like, here, take it, take my money, and I'll be like, oh, this isn't going to work, something's going to happen. Um, in relationships, it was always like, oh, well, she probably hates me, and everybody probably hates me, and it's an anxiety thing. As a professional photographer, it was it's every single day. Um, I have season credentials to most professional teams. Um, that I can I'm able to go and shoot shoot as an assignment anywhere with all the college teams that's going to continue and as I have My credential in my hand That allows me to get into the building The whole way there. I feel like I'm about to throw up and I'm feeling just anxious that something's gonna happen I'm not gonna be allowed in my photos aren't gonna work something's gonna go wrong and it is torture and it's a prison living that way and it just builds up exhaustion and anger and everything in you and it's hard dealing with that kind of stuff. And um, when you're constantly worried about things not going right or not going to go well or not going to work out, it, it leads to a lot of different results in how you're going to react to different situations. And I'm living proof of that. So, um, you know, the whole point of me letting people into this world and letting them know this side of me is because, you know, I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not alone going through this. So to finish this video and to wrap it up here, I'm sure I've bored everybody to tears by now. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over some things that are good to do to start your day, um, things that I've learned and um, different ways to at least get your day started on a better foot. Um, first things first is something I've always actually done to help me get a little momentum is uh, first thing I do is I make my bed when I wake up before I do anything else um, I wake up and I immediately complete a task so I've already achieved something for the day even if it's something as small and minor as making my bed um, I did it um, and then the next thing I do is actually I, I do and these are no secrets by the way these are anything you can research these are things I researched to kind of help me throughout my days um, but the next thing you could do is um, just even in your head, just do a small gratitude list, like five things that you're grateful for. Um, one of my longtime friends and mentors, Jonathan Davis, um, guy who got me into the gym business, 
uh, and a guy that literally taught me everything I know and turned me into a good employee from a crappy one. Um, he really taught me uh, a lot of uh, this, that step right there is doing the, you know, things you're grateful for in the beginning of the day. It gets your mind into a positive outlook. It gets your mind in a positive motion to start your day off versus waking up and thinking, oh man, this day is going to be blah, blah, blah. Um, I immediately think, think, think of things that I'm grateful for. Um, and it can be the same thing every day if it's a continuing part of your life. Um, and you can be grateful for it every day for sure. Um, another thing is uh, I listen to upbeat music. I listen to songs that are fun. Um, I listen to uh, things that just kind of get my mood up and get me happy. I try and stay away from things that are just downtrodden and negative. Uh, I've done that the last couple days and it's been a tremendous help. Um, another thing that honestly I've never thought to do before, but um, uh, most recently was brought to my attention and I did it for the first time today was journaling and writing. Um, I've been a musician for a long time. Uh, not a very good one, but uh, uh, I've been a musician. I've written songs and you know I always remember writing those songs. It was therapeutic and it helped me. Um, so I went and dug up one of my old songbooks, um, and now I'm turning it into just, I guess, a journal, but it's not a, a journal like, on this day I did this, this, and this. No, it's definitely more of a, you know, just writing down what I'm feeling for the day, and it's a huge weight off of my shoulders, especially on days that maybe I don't have counseling, or I just, you know, days I might be feeling a little down. Can I say down again? Uh, just, you know, it, it's a way to kind of just get the world off your shoulders. I mean, it's a way to relieve the weight that you feel when you're carrying around with you. Um, and another thing I like to do is I like to do something that's a hobby of mine that I enjoy doing. Um, for me, typically it's going out and taking photos or um, doing videos of something. Um, I love getting out and doing that. Sure, I make money from being a photographer and videographer, but honestly, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, to get out there and just, you know, take pictures and take pictures of the world around me. Go and, and do things I enjoy. Like I love aviation, sports, concerts. Um, I like hiking and being out in trails and things. And um, it's great taking pictures of wherever I am. Like um, there, there's a lot of people out there that can see the world differently. And, and honestly, being behind a camera just really lets me take a good look at the world around me. And uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to capture it. Um, and then last but not least is talk to people. Talk, get help, um, reach out to people you know you can reach out to, um, and, and ask them if it's okay if you just vent for a little bit. Uh, keep the people that are close to you close. They're put in your life for a reason. They're put in your life to be a support for you. You don't always have to be internal about your issues. You don't always have to be internal about everything. Share the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's what people that are truly in your life are for. And that's why they have been placed in your life. Um, this is not a religious or spiritual thing, but people meet for a reason. And, you know, I've lost a lot of those people to my own doing. And I've lost, um, you know, a lot of relationships, friendships, relationships, romantic relationships, what have you. I've lost a lot of that to my own doing. And um, it's because I wasn't trying to be in control of what I was doing. So, um, you know, the last bit of damage I'm, I'm hoping is repairable, but if not, I'm still going to do the better, what's better for me, and I still need to do what's best for me, and that needs to be the main priority, and that needs to be the main priority for you guys as well. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll put up my information. Feel free to reach out um, anytime. Um, I can get into more. Obviously, there's a lot of my story that I didn't, you know, get into. Um, and, you know, I, I tried to keep it short. I failed at that. But um, I just want you to know in conclusion that you guys are not alone. Um, I appreciate you watching this video. Please feel free to share it, if anything, just to get the word out about the website I was talking about. Um, support your friends. Um, quick support. John Shallow Hockey has some awesome merchandise. It is Christmas time, so um, if you're watching this at a different time than Christmas, go to their site and buy something as a gift for somebody or for yourself. They have, I, I wear this hat all the time. It's why it looks like this. The hat looked a lot better when I first got it, but um, it's literally, one of, it's my favorite hat I have. So thank you, John Chavo Hockey, for that one. But, um, you know, just totally lost train of thought. Told you that was going to happen. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this. And, you know, um, like I said, feel free to reach out. And um, 
I thank you for allowing me to open up and uh, I hope if anything that if one person now gets the courage to open up and seek help through something um, I have a reference link on this video please feel free to do so and um, yeah I guess that's all I got I hope you guys have a great holiday season um, if you're watching this after the holidays I hope it was great um, stay safe and um, I'll probably get back to this video thing pretty soon I know I always say that but I'm gonna do it for real this time thanks you guys <laughs>